Okay, in this video we're going to look at the definition of a group and some very simple examples. So uh, let's look at the definition first. So a group is a set G together with an operation which we'll call star. This is a binary operation and uh, it satisfies these four axioms. So the first is that if A and B are in G, then A star B is in G. So in other words, the group is closed under this operation. Next, there's a special element E in G that acts as the identity. So in other words, A star E and E star A equals A. And uh, next is for all A in G, there is an A inverse in G, which is the inverse. So in other words, A star A inverse equals the identity. And then for all A, B, and C in G, we have this associativity property. In other words, we can put parentheses wherever we want. Um, okay, so let's look at some basic examples. And so now notice, uh, for the examples, we'll need to specify a set and an operation. So uh, maybe some familiar examples would be Z with addition. And so um, kind of that satisfies uh, all of these properties kind of obviously, you know, the identity would be zero. Um, inverses would be, you know, negatives of whichever number you're starting with, um, and so on and so forth. The associativity is built in from the addition. Um, next, we could have uh, the rational numbers with addition, or the real numbers with addition, or the complex numbers with addition, or anything like that. So now let's look at maybe uh, some multiplicative groups. So notice that the integers will not form a multiplicative group. Hardly anything has an inverse. Only one and negative one have inverses. And so in fact, we could take um, that subset of the integers to be a group. So we could say the set plus minus one together with the operation of multiplication would form a group. So that's closed and there's an identity and everything has an inverse and so on and so forth. Um, and then what about the rational numbers? Well, everything has an inverse except for zero. So we could say Q and then maybe with a X up there for a times and that means that we are um, deleting zero and then with multiplication. And here, just to point that out, this is Q minus zero. Great, so now maybe one more example. Maybe uh, G, L, N, R, and then with matrix multiplication. So in other words, all N by N matrices with non-zero determinant. So let's just point that out, that uh, G, L, N, R will be equal to all A, and these are N by N, where the determinant of A is not equal to zero. So that, in fact, forms a group. Um, so now I'll clean up the board and we'll look at some uh, more examples that have a little more applications to number theory. Okay, so moving on to some more number theoretic examples, um, let's define Zn to be equal to the set of all equivalence classes mod n. So I have a pre previous video where we go over this, um, but it's not e that hard to see that this is equal to the equivalence class of zero. So that would be all multiples of n. The equivalence class of one. So that would be all numbers that have remainder one when divided by n. The equivalence class of two and so on up to the equivalence class of n minus one. Good, and now we can define um, uh, an addition on this set as follows. Maybe we could define the equivalence class of X plus the equivalence class of Y equals the equivalence class of X plus Y. Good. 
So um, I'll leave it to you to prove that that's a well-defined operation and that it's associative, um, but it's not too hard to see that in this setup we have inverses for everything, we have an identity which would be the equivalence class of zero, and it's closed and so on and so forth. So um, I'll just present that as a fact that Zn together with this addition, which I'll just call plus, um, forms a group. Good. And so maybe that brings us to a question, which we'll look at um, as we finish this video, and we'll look at it more carefully in another video, is that um, could we define x times y equals the equivalence class of xy and make a group. Good. So we won't totally answer that question um, this time, uh, but we will in a uh, subsequent video. So I'll erase this board and then we'll look a little bit more about this group uh, Zn+. Plus. Okay, so previously we defined Zn and uh, we stated the fact and waved our hands at the reason why Zn um, with an addition that we defined was a group. And so, and then we raised the question of with multiplication, will that also be a group? So as an example, I want to set n equal to 6 and then make an addition table and a multiplication table modulo 6. So in other words, I have an addition table, so I need all my equivalence classes. So 2, 3, 4, 5, and then uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so uh, this is known as the Cayley table if you have a group. And so what we'll do is put the intersection of the rows and the columns with uh, what you get when you add these two things. So 0 plus anything will obviously give you um, whatever you started with because it's the identity and I'll stop writing brackets just uh, uh, for a simplification. So here we have this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because we're adding 0. And now 1 plus 1 will be 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, 4, 5. And now 1 plus 5 is 6, but the equivalence class of 6 is the same thing as the equivalence class of 0. Now since this is uh, symmetric, because the addition is commutative, we can fill in this very easily. So 3, 4, 5, and then 0 again because 1 plus 5 is 0. And now let's look at 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 3 is 5, 2 plus 4 is 6, which is 0 because of the equivalence class. 2 plus 5 is 7, which is 1 because we're looking at equivalence classes. And now we have 5, 0, 1. Great. And now finally, uh, we have 3 plus 3, which is 0, 1, 2. So because 3 plus 5 is 8, 8, which is 2, mod 6. And then 1, 2. And now we can look at 4 plus 4, which is 8, which is again 2. 4 plus 5, which is 9, which is 3 mod 6. And now finally we have 5 plus 5, which is 10, which uh, is 4 mod 6. So now if we look in here, we see that there is a 0 in every row and every column, which tells us that every element here has an inverse. So for example, if we go here to 4, we go over to the 0 entry, we go up and we see that the inverse of 4 is 2. Okay, so this uh, provides some evidence that uh, Z6 with this addition is a group. So now let's look at the multiplication and see if anything goes wrong. Okay, 
So uh, I've cleaned up my chart and uh, now I'm going to do with uh, multiplication. So in other words, I will multiply these numbers and then uh, take the residue modulo 6. So we'll move through this a little more quickly. So the first row and column are easy because we're multiplying by 0. Good. Um, uh, but that gives us actually a lot of information because in this case with multiplication the identity will be 1. We see that there's no entry 1 in this row or this column which tells you that 0 does not have an inverse. Um, now maybe that's expected but that means that uh, we don't have a group already. Maybe we could just get rid of 0 and then we'd have a group but again we'll cover that a bit later. So now let's look at 1 so we know 1 is the identity so it'll be easy to figure out um, this row and column. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, now let's multiply by 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6, which is 0. 2 times 4 is 8, which is the same thing as 2. 2 times 5 is 10, which is the same thing as 4. So now notice there's no 1 in this row, which means 2 does not have an inverse. Another thing that's interesting is when we multiply 2 and 3, even though neither of those is 0, we get the product uh, is 0. Um, which is not something that happens like in the real numbers, for example. Now we'll do the same thing here. So here we get uh, 0, 2, 4, just by the symmetry of this table. Now let's finish it off. So 3 times 3 is 9, which is 3. 3 times 4 is 12, which is 0. 3 times 5 is 15, which is 3. And then we can put those entries in the column as well. So again, 3 does not have an inverse. Now we'll do the same thing with 4. So 4 times 4 is 16, which is 4. Yep. And then 4 times 5 is 20, which is 2, because it's 18 plus 2. Now we can fill this in. Good. And now 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 is 1 mod 6. So now notice that... Uh, 2, 3, and 4 do not have an inverse uh, modulo 6, and so that means that this does not form a group. Now notice that 1 and 5 do have an inverse mod 6, and um, <clears throat> perhaps we could, that gives us some evidence that we could delete 0, 2, 3, and 4 and uh, end up with a group, but again, that'll be something that we cover in the next video.